Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 65 of Scion of the Dark House, a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition gothic horror podcast. Because it is gothic horror, there may be some things that come up to a line for people, such as blood, gore, violence, talk of abuse and trauma, child endangerment, and other such things. If anything comes up to a line for you, please take a break. Your support means a lot to us, but so does your mental health. So in the last session, the group left the cultist compound and made their way down the road towards Broken Heart, where they found a messenger getting mugged by a group of thieves, bandits, thugs, something. They managed to scare them through a use of enchanting abilities, polymorph and kicking a cat, and intimidating in general, as well as a Gesh spell, forcing the bandit leader to prevent his members from going after the party anytime soon. They made it to Broken Heart, where they went into the severed heartstring and met with the owner, Tiffany, who told them that she was sending out posters and messages to the nearby cities of Morning and Grave's End, but to no avail. No one had come to collect the reward. Nobody had come to kill the pig. Putting two and two together, you all figured that somebody was intercepting these messages. However, it seemed one message had got through as Cecilia Mooney came up to the table and addressed them, saying that she had lost her brother he was somewhere in the town investigating the hell pig and no one was sure where he was. She then informed them that the Varkins, the people that owned the stuck pig butchery, were a little suspicious, despite the fact that they gave vast quantities of money to the town and made incredibly good ham, bacon, and other pork-related products. They owned a windmill that nobody was allowed to use. Being a butchery, they shouldn't own a windmill, which was suspicious. They decided to investigate Pollyanna and Matthew Varkin, who ran the shop. Arthur found the pigs were absurdly fat, unnaturally fat, but not sure what to make of it, he relayed it to the group. The group were inside and interviewed Pollyanna to find that she was immune to charm effects and found that there was transmutation magic afoot as well as abjuration magic protecting both Pollyanna and Matthew Varkin. Concluding that they were the ones behind various ills in the town and they were somehow profiting off of this, they decided to go check out the windmill and found Celia Mooney to address her and ask her where the windmill was. They found their way to the windmill Opening it up, they found it was protected by an arcane lock, and inside was an altar to a demon known as Mammon, who demands gold of his followers instead of souls, as well as a strange pit of swirling clouds and golden lightning. They found the millstone was being used to mill up regular people, and they found Cecilia's brother's half of their friendship necklace in the barrel containing other artifacts that seemed to have been taken off of people before they were milled to death. Presumably he was milled to death as well. They decided that they were going to destroy the statue of Mammon, where after Lark unleashed two eldritch blasts and severely dented the statue, a strange being covered in chains and severe burn marks appeared from the shadows, declaring that they were not the Varkins and they had come to defile the shrine of Mammon. And he started to swing his chains. However, we do have a prepared action that immediately goes off as this thing begins to swing the chains over its head. Arthur, would you like to make an attack roll against this thing with your ensnaring strike? Everybody I else, sure do. please roll initiative so we can get this on the roll. This okay. that was a bad sentence, and this thing rolled terribly. Uh, on the on the roll, I get it. I get it. I got the eighteen. Okay, wait, 18 for rare. Oh, hold on. 20. That's plus two on initiative. All right. 20 for Rarick. Okay. Uh, well, tw 22 for the attack roll. That hits for sure. 
Okay, I need a strength save. Oh, and then let me let me do the damage. So that is a D eight plus. If you're rolling seven. fire damage, don't bother. Uh, okay, I will ignore the fire damage. Just those two, those two. So it rolled a seven on its strength. Oh, that definitely fails. Um, okay, total of 22 damage. Ooh. And he is now restrained until the spell ends. Um, it's concentration up to one minute. So I what don't know. What did you say the damage was? 22? 22 total, yep. Um, okay, so every, every turn at the beginning of his turn, he makes another strength save. Uh huh. If he fails, he takes 1d6 piercing. Um, if he saves it, the spell ends. All right. All right. So, Percy, what did you get on initiative? I got a 14. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, it's an action to make the strength save. So if he saves it, it still uses an action. All right, gotcha. Um, Lark? Got an 18. 18. Arthur? 18. Oh, wait, hang on. Advantage. 18 as well. 18 as well. So whichever one of you two has the higher decks goes first. And whoever is running Alex or the council, how much did Alex get on initiative? I don't know it. Yeah, I don't have his. Oh, I guess I do. Yeah, that's in my email. Yeah. Um... Da, 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 da. It's just a straight roll. Yeah, um, okay. he gets a uh, thirteen. Yeah. All right. Oh, I was so... gonna say eleven. <laughs> We'll go with 13 just to be generous. All right, so Rarick, you are actually first up as you watch this thing emerge from the shadows. Arthur releases his arrow. The flames lick up the body, but do nothing. But what does do something is the vines that explode outward and wrap around this creature as it slashes at them with its chains, but the vines just grow too quickly and wrap around it entirely. What would you like to do? Are we like within 20 feet? Are we like within 20 feet of this guy? Yeah, it's not that big of a room. It's probably about a maybe 60 foot diameter room. And okay. you all are basically across the, the um, weird yep. storm pit coming. Yep. Uh, just as a heads up for you guys, since he's restrained, all attack rolls against it have advantage, and it has disadvantage on dex saves. Oh, well, I'll do my favorite <laughs> magic missile. I'll get at least a fifth level slot. Ooh. Uh, that gives me how many is this? Eight? So that is three, four, seven? five, six, seven. Yes, yeah, seven bolts. So seven D four plus seven. Okay, I'm not Oof. gonna roll the thing. I'll do the digital thing. Yeah, that that might be a bit better. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Even the digital thing is doing it one by one. What the fuck? <laughs> if you Oof. if you if you click the dice more than more than once before you hit roll. It'll, you can keep counting them up. Well, no, I don't know. What did you say? <laughs> like on the side there where the dice come up, like if you click the D20 like twice before you hit the green button down at the bottom, it'll keep stacking up the dice and then it'll roll like three or four or 10 or whatever. I don't think, are you talking about the same website? D&D Beyond? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Okay. I don't get it. <laughs> okay. I'll just roll it in that like, okay. like the regular way. Okay. Four. Four. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Two. Two. 
four. Four. Two. Two. And then minus seven. Fourteen. All right. Good Lord. Okay. (laughs) This thing might not even get to act. Uh, You pummel it with this energy that you throw out, forming the bolts of force that slam into this thing. It roars again, incredibly irate as it jangles its chains. Next up is either Lark or Arthur, whoever has the higher dexterity. Yeah, I, yeah. All yeah, right. I have a 20. All, All right, right. so we are going to go for a, you know what? I got, we got, we got some spell slot. Yeah, fuck it. We're just going to go for a raw attack. Never mind. Um, <laughs> let's go here. I'm just going to attack with the dragon wing bow. That is a 22 to hit. That certainly hits. Okay. No fire damage. No those fire guys, damage. Those guys. That is a total of 17. And All right. s- still on my turn, since Jasmine can see me, she can attack too. So she's going to do a pounce. All right. And that is a... Hang on. Because I realized I had her bonuses wrong. Ooh. Yeah, like way wrong. Uh, I had it like a plus eight. It's supposed to be like a plus 13. So that's a 21 to hit with a Oh, claw. yeah, that hits. As you unleash this arrow, the flames lick across this creature's flesh, but it doesn't seem to touch it. But the arrow sinks deep. Jasmine dashes forward, leaping, taking her claws and raking down its exposed stomach letting this black ichor leak from it. How much damage did uh, Jasmine do? That's a total of 10, and I need a strength save, please. Um, so that is a 17. Ooh, balls. Saved it by one. Um, but she is still going to take her turn and do an additional bite attack. And that will be a 19 to hit. That hits. And that is another 10 piercing. Oof. And she has that charm that makes her attacks magical. Correct. Yes. Um, She bites this thing on its... um, what is oh my god she bites it on its leg sick i was go. about to say i was like is it a quad i don't know um she's right on the ass teeth in <laughs> into its leg and tears blood gushes forward as it shrieks and screams its skin begins to bubble and boil before it bursts into flames and the chains fall through it as it burns to ash You watch as the chains lay inert for a moment before slithering forward into the pit, vanishing into the storm. You watch as the chains fall into the clouds. It's like a continual lightning strikes as this thing enters the cloud and you don't actually hear it hit the bottom of anything. It just, all the chains flow in and then it's gone. Well, that was gross. And you are out of initiative. Sweetness. That's the first time I fucking got a snaring strike to work. I'm so thrilled. And he didn't even take any piercing damage. Okay. There we go. Yes, so that was fun. And also super creepy. We so we, we, that was not the end of it. It can't. It's not the end of it. <laughs> nope. Nope. Most assuredly not. That was way too easy. What if we push the statue into the cloud? I mean, I'm game. Uh, sure. 
It's like uh, really right. big, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's pretty big. Yeah. All of you that are pushing, give me strength checks. I'm going to give the help push. action to somebody else because I'm real bad at this. Um, okay. One, Who wants second. to take it? I'm, I'm looking something up real quick. Okay. Oh, do you have a spell or something? Yes. Oh, it doesn't matter. I, I have got a enhance anyway. ability. Ah. Um, so it would just make that even help. It would give you advantage on strength checks and your carrying capacity would double. I feel like that wouldn't really even help that much. Well, if he was going to pick it up, um, then it would help. I don't, but, can, um, it, can any of us pick it up? It I looks doubt it. giant and very heavy. All right, so it's I'll just, gold. So I'll just do guidance on myself. <laughs> All right, <laughs> hey, how, how big is this thing? It's probably about maybe like six feet tall, and it is looks like it's probably made of solid gold. I mean, you could always enlarge reduce it. Oh yeah, I, I'm gonna just reduce it. I'm going to cast Reduce <laughs> on it for free because I'm a fairy. All right. So that means its size is halved and its weight is divided by eight, I think. It shrinks one size category and its weight is divided by eight, I believe. Its weight is reduced yeah. to one eighth of normal. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, All right. uh, you could, yeah, you, I mean, it's still heavy. But you can. Oh, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna let them try to push it over for a minute, then giggle <laughs> and snap my fingers and shrink it down to size. Oh, you're a dick. All right. Well, that's an 18 for Percy on strength. 12. Yeah, for it just Arthur. slides across the floor and it topples into the hole as it hits the clouds. There is a plume of these clouds as the clouds just turn gold for a second, glowing and glittering before the clouds settle with the same lightning, but you don't hear it hit the ground. It just went through. Mm. I thought that would stop it. Whoops. Cool. Well, so, now what? We could go shove the Varkins in there. Now that's an idea. Okay. But are we sure that's going to stop the hell pig? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, like we need to close to this portal. Um, I mean, I feel like maybe beating up this seemingly beloved family of butchers in the middle of town might not go over great for us. Well, I'm not hearing you come up with any ideas. Well, I feel like if they saw something was happening to their windmill, they'd probably come rushing over here, wouldn't they? So are you saying Rarick should set it on fire? I'm saying we should lay a trap. And I don't know whether that or maybe Alex can whip up some illusion, something or other, like an explosion sound or something. Sure, I have major image. I'm sure I can do something. As he's still like drinking his coffee. What is with you today? You're very tired. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, hmm. So do we have any sort of traps we can lay? Uh, no. He's got wall of fire. Is that a thing? Maybe catch the thing on fire, though. Yeah, lights I'm... a whole bunch of stuff on fire. I, I'd rather not use it unless we absolutely have to. Yeah, I got nothing. I mean, we could just hide in the shadows behind the illusions, and when they appear, attack. True. Or I could make them kill each other. Well, they seem to be resistant to charming, don't they? Not everything's a charm, darling. Ah, uh, so much thinking. Yeah, You're I muted. guess we'll just hide. <laughs> Rarick, you're muted. Oh, sorry. We can like start a start a bonfire or something. It doesn't have to be like a big fire. Even though I'd much I knew it was going to be fire. I mean, 
We have Alex now. He can make an illusion of fire. We don't have to do actual fire. And there's always fire with you guys. Only a 15-foot cube, so I can't make the smoke go up very high. Mm. Let's see what I have. It'll smell like smoke, but... Excuse me. Why can't we just go back? No. I don't know because I feel like attacking two residents of this town in the middle of town might kind of make people think, oh, look, the outsiders are coming in and trying to kill us. I mean, we what were if hired you... by Tiffany. She doesn't know us. We were hired. She just put up <laughs> posters and we said, hey, what are these posters about? <laughs> Uh, what are the limits of enlarge reduce? Like, could you reduce the windmill? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think the windmill uh, counts as an object that I can reduce. No, I that's what like I was wondering. I was like, objects are a little bit different. The statue was oh, definitely sorry. an object, but once it gets beyond a certain point. Because I think a lot of times magic works off of functionality as well as size. Mm. Because the windmill does not function like an object. It can't have spells that only affect objects cast on it and have any effect because it's not an object, it's a building. It's kind of like how you can't... It's kind of like how you can't use... um, something like you can use catapult on a corpse but you can't use it on a person oh wait no i think you can use it on right because a corpse is technically an object yeah Uh, but people aren't so you have to make them a corpse in order to have that spell affect them um how big is this thing it's like probably 40 50 feet tall it's a big old windmill oh you know what Let's take the other half of the pendant and talk to this lady first. Uh, do you think that's smart? Like, let's go tell her that we found maybe probably her dead brother and also we haven't found the people responsible. Well, yeah, it's called closure. And also, if we start to inform the people around town about these two, they wouldn't be as beloved anymore. And we can attack them for real. Well, I mean, I feel like we should probably sort the problem out before they realize that we've desecrated their unholy shrine and yeah. run for it. Right. All right, so, so ambush the butchery, is that what we're doing? Are we back to beating them up? Because I feel like we're back to beating them up. I'm yes. always up for that. I'm always up for emotionally devastating a mortal as well, but we can do that after. Okay. Okay, how do we how do we get their attention? Uh, we could try mm-hmm. shooting them. That tends to get people's attention. I think the strategy is sort of just devolved into go into their place of work and kill them. And I mean you've done it multiple times before. It's a sound plan. It's worked. All right. Let's do that. Yeah, if it ain't broken, let's just blast it. All right. <laughs> Here we go. So oh, yes. hope this weird little storm portal closes by itself or something. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, don't it's, know. It's still we'll going. figure it out as we go. It's fine. It'll all work out. You worry too much. Well, someone has to worry at all out of the four <laughs> of us. Yeah. Better do, you do, than do, me. Do. Finding shit in the book. Um, so it's getting close to nighttime. You guys have been have spent quite a lot of, of time um, wandering around, doing things. The sun is setting at this point as you begin to make your way back into town. Town is beginning to quiet down. Um, some of the, the houses have lights on in the windows as well as the broken heart string. The severed heartstring has its lights on, but it seems that the butchery is closed. 
Ooh, balls. Well, oh, it's not like we were plan. good. We, the, this was never going to be a legal situation that we were in. <laughs> like, Fair. I feel like whatever we did over there, they would have felt something. I mean, does that mean we're breaking in? or? Yeah, we, who, we're going to kill them. Who cares? <laughs> oh, wow. Coming from our resident <laughs> priest. Fine. Okay. So oh, I'm sorry. Off. We're we're drawing the line at breaking and entering. That's where it, we, we murder. Fine. We can do murder all we want, but breaking in. Wow. Murder is totally fine. Mm. I mean, I'm cool either way. All right. Then open the door. But it's it's locked. I don't know. Is it locked? <laughs> Should I just? Yeah. You you reach and just confidently take the door handle and <laughs> it's locked. Okay, I'm fireballing the All right. whole building. Do not fire. No, God, just just calm down. Fireballing no. the whole building like I did last time. I mean, oh you can God. certainly roll damage as you, you unleash it... your fireball. Do you want to? Do you want to take it as a, vo- as a vote or? You already said you're doing it. Like, <laughs> I mean, I could stop him from doing it. <laughs> you could. Unless he's burning something higher than a third level spell slot, counter spell shuts off fireball. Oh, I was going to do a fifth level. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm going to go all out on this bitch. I, just, I, mean, I was suggesting it. I haven't, like... I mean, this building is bigger than fireball's radius, isn't it? Yeah, so there's no guarantee you're going to hit them before they get to run out. Right. So can I, can I pick the lock now, or... Yeah, guidance. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. <laughs> 30. Oh, yeah. Once again, this is a very simple lock. One, two, three, chunk. The door opens. There we go. Are we happy now? Nah, not really. Oh, okay. As you push the door <laughs> open... It kind of drifts and it hits the bell and it ding, ding, ding. Uh, stealth check? Yes, you can give me okay. a stealth check. Thank you. <clears throat> 27 per myself. I'm going to do Jasmine as well. And 15 for Jasmine. Yeah, 15. All right. As you slip into the building, you notice there is a small light, almost like a single candle, at the very, very back around a corner of the kitchen. You kind of stealth your way over and peek around the corner to see both of them are wearing black cloaks with hoods. Mm. But both of their hoods are down at the moment. Uh, You see Matthew, um, next to him, leaned up against the wall, is a staff. It appears to be made out of gold with rubies set into it. He has a pig that is laying on the ground near a what appears to be some kind of drain. And he is filling a uh, water skin with pig blood that he has sliced uh, the pig's throat with a knife. You see Pollyanna counting out gold coins and then she gets to a certain number and slides it in the bag and she goes she very quietly as she, she expects that if she's loud enough somebody outside the building might hear but she doesn't think there's anyone inside the building at least not at the moment goes hurry up if we get enough and get there in time we can just summon another one it's fine as she continues counting out the gold to about maybe 10 and sliding it into the bag one two three four five six seven eight nine ten into the bag and matthew goes i'm going as fast as possible pigs only bleed out so fast jeez and that's what can I see. can I ready another action? Yes, you may. I'm just gonna keep observing them unless they try to leave. If they try to leave, I'm gonna crack off a hail of thorns. 
Gotcha. So that is what you see. The rest of you, what are you all doing? I guess I'm going to come in. <laughs> I'm going to fly after Arthur because yeah. if he had the door open. Wait, um, so they didn't hear that bell? Apparently not. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Don't jump a gift shark in the mouth. Right, do be... we need to roll stealth or anything? Yeah, roll stealth. Jeez. I'll be the last one <laughs> to go in there. I got a 10. Ooh. Ouch. I also got a 10. Hey. Oh my God. <laughs> 16 plus 2. Do you guys, must you guys be so loud? 18. Oh, we need to roll for Alex. Oh, yeah. Someone, someone yeah. have a sheet. Well, clearly, I'll, I'll we throw the see him, so he's fine. <laughs> he has... He has a plus a, two, plus zero. <laughs> he, has a plus he got zero. a nine. Oh. Ooh. Super. So you all kind of look at each other and you all go for the door at the same time and you all oh, 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 bang, the door flies open. Ding, 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 ding. God damn it. As you all like crammed through the door before and everyone just kind of goes through and you hear, what the hell? From the back as uh, Pollyanna looks up She doesn't see you, Arthur, around the corner. She just looks up. And she reaches under the table. And she yanks on something. And you hear the crack of wood as she pulls out a long sword. And (laughs) spins it the right way around in a single hand. Okay. And you see Uh, Matthew reach for the staff and just pull the staff in. Yeah, he stands up, that. letting the pig continue to bleed out. Yeah, can, can, can I we just, see them? Can I just? No, you cannot. They are around a corner in a back part of the kitchen. You can, however, see a soft candle light of like from a single candle. <laughs> cool. Uh, Percy, you want to take the husband? Sure. Cool. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go for ensnaring strike on Pollyanna. All right. Uh, roll me an attack roll. Okay, let's see here. Doop, boop, ba doop, boop, 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 boop. That'll be a 24. Uh, 24 hits. Okay, I need a strength save. Three, D8. Yep. And, and that is 20 total damage. So it's 10 um, for the strength save. So you Does not shoot pass. her directly in the shoulder as she turns. You do see she actually has armor on underneath her cloak. Mm. And you shoot her in the shoulder and she, oh, ouch! And well, so how much damage was that? It was 20. 20 points of damage. Awesome. Correct. As she is now uh, profusely bleeding and singed a bit from your arrow. And the vines explode out and wrap around her as she kind of looks in fear for a moment. Is there anybody else who wants to do any action? Yeah, I want to run up and I want to cast Hold Person as a third level spell on both of them. All right. So let's do Matthew's save first. It's a wisdom save? Yes. Well, Matthew got an eight. And Pollyanna got a 10. So both of them fail, both fail. and both of them seem to be held in place cool. by the spell. All right, boys, like to come on up. <laughs> All good. They're not going anywhere. All right. I'll just I'll have Jasmine like creep around the corner, all intimidating like and growly. I'll start like gathering like their staff and like their sword and like any yeah. spell components or anything I can see on them. Yeah. Put them in um, my bag. <laughs> it seems like Matthew is the one that has a lot of spell components on him. 
Um, Pollyanna only has the long sword. She doesn't seem to have anything else on her. So they're paralyzed right now? Yep. They're both restrained, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or wait, par- she's paralyzed or restrained? I paralyzed, both of them. Okay, both so they're both paralyzed. paralyzed and, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, do we want any, any rope or anything, guys, to tie them up with? I mean, one of them's already tied up, but... I mean, well, shouldn't we just kill them? I mean, maybe find out what they're doing first, yeah, like how to stop the help. I would thing. like to know that. Um, so, I mean, yeah, this is a butcher's shop. Is there any chains or any ropes or things we can tie him up with? I mean, no, I the have, back area I think I that have you need a rope. Yeah, the back area that you are in is basically like the abattoir. So there are chains from the ceiling with meat hooks that pigs are hanging from, like halves of pigs and ribs of pigs are hanging from so that they can kind of drip and drain a little bit. So you could theoretically take a piece of meat down and rip the chain off of the ceiling. Yeah, we'll just do Arthur's ropes. <laughs> yeah, I got that rope. All right. Do we, do we need to do any checks to tie them up or anything? Or No, they're paralyzed. You just tie them up. And I think the minute of um, paralysis that they have from hold person wears off as you just finished tying them up and they you see Matthew kind of begin to like try and break the rope Pollyanna's a little more resigned but she definitely gives you a death glare Mm -hmm. oh I'm gonna make sure that we gag Matthew yeah (laughs) smart Yeah, I would say you were you're able to do that before the hold person ends, and he kind of <laughs> as he's like trying to, and she's like, "Oh, shut up!" Now, Pollyanna, so, Pollyanna, you want to tell us a little bit more about this honey glazed ham? <laughs> Fuck you! Mm, in your dreams, bitch. She manages so, to give you a middle pr- finger with her tied hands. <laughs> Beric, darling, is she still... She still has some abjuration on her? Let me see. It's... What the fuck? Let, <laughs> let's do detect magic. Casting that. I'm sure she probably still does. Yeah. She still does have the abjuration magic. Um, do you want you me get, to give that a whirl? Be a darling and get that off of her for me. All right, I'll come up and touch her head and try to do a dispel magic on it. It doesn't budge. Oh, wow. It, it ripples. Item? It ripples, but it doesn't budge. Hmm. Well, either it's a very strong spell or, I don't know, it's not something I can end. Is there anything so, fine about? Is it something she's wearing? Stronger seemingly than her. The, the other, the detect magic before didn't reveal any magic items. It was just like it wasn't an item. It was just an effect on her. Yeah, it was just an effect. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, all right. Uh, God, what's her name again? Jesus. Pollyanna. Uh, Pollyanna. Um, here's how this is gonna work. Uh, you're going to tell us everything we want to know. And if you do, we won't kill you. And we'll just turn you over to law enforcement. If, if you do, then we'll, we'll kill you. Or if you don't, then we'll kill you. So do with that what you will. Uh, what's going on here? What's with the, the hell pig? Is that really how Down you... Percy's kind of hot. Okay. <laughs> I don't really care to tell you. It's not your business. Right. To punch her in the face. (laughs) Uh, Did I turn her into a cat and crush her? No. No. No, I would undo the binding. When a creature that um, is polymorph drops to zero hit points, they revert to their previous form. So basically, the ropes would fall off of her. You'd choke the cat. The cat would die. She would transform back into Pollyanna and, and not be us. down by the ropes. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
Oh, Polly. So I can Polly. punch her in the face? Yes, you can punch her in the face. Um, what's your strength modifier? Strength this modifier is, is two. So you yeah. deal two points of bludgeoning damage as you just boom, soccer right Wait. in the nose, blood spurting everywhere. Oh, go oh, fuck you. Well, what were you expecting? A candy? So about the hell pig, what's going on? We, we saw your little shrine. Uh, we destroyed it. Um, so we, whatever, we, we killed your little weird chainy friend. If uh, we get out of this alive, we're getting another one. Yeah, you're not. Well, you see, the you're thing is, Pollyanna. you aren't. Boys, 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 boys. You worship an archdevil. I assume the hells aren't even that scary for you at this point, right? Not really, no. We haven't Lord. even sold our souls, to be honest. It's all gold. Oh, darling. Darling, darling. That's a good bit of information to know. Now, I personally don't particularly care for devils. They're so predictable, you know? Ugh. Like, you give them what they want and they do exactly what they say they'll do. They don't even try to get through their deals. Admittedly, most of their deals are always so finicky. I'm not a devil, obviously. And I don't really trek them too much. Yeah, I love when he gets all bougie like this. <laughs> but who says that you have to go to the hells in the first place? I'm sure someone back home could have use for you. And there it is. I mean, you'd make a fine plaything. Have you ever trekked with hags very much, darling? For the love of... No. Frankly, oh. no. Oh, darling, they'll rip the skin off your face and turn it into a lampshade and a pie. I've seen it happen. So I'm... Percy wants to kill you. Maybe you go to the hells. Maybe you don't. Maybe you do wind up in the shadow fell. Or he wants to send you to the authorities. I want to give you a one-way ticket into the Fey Wilds version of the hells if you don't start talking. And trust me, we can be just as scary as the devils if you don't know what you're doing. I go over them. Go fuck yourself. Okay. Uh, when she them. says that, I'm just gonna mind sliver her. So give All me right. an intelligence saving throw. Intelligence saving throw. Still gets a punch of it just because it's satisfying. Doesn't work. She's gonna take some damage. Uh, what is mind sliver? Da, 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 da. It's like 2D something. Uh, she's going to take nine psychic damage. Well, that's easy math. As she... Oh! Blood trickles out of... Even more blood trickles out of your nose, and then you just come up and boom, punch her in the nose again. Oh! Yep. At this point, it's definitely well, broken. It's just at a different angle. Cool. Boys, why don't we take a little bit of a different approach? I think... Maybe Pollyanna you waterboard is, uh, her? Not where I was going, but <laughs> maybe later. Um, God damn. No, no. Um, I was thinking Pollyanna's a blaze. bit resistant. So why don't we uh, Try leverage punching her. the other one? Okay. No, no, no. Um, I'm going to punch the other one. I don't want... Well, go ahead. I, I, I don't want to ungag the, the fellow here. Maybe, Arthur, you could just communicate with him in his mind. Um, and, well... Yeah, you... Uh, are you going for, like, the nose oh, again? Yeah, you're just going to punch him in the face, yeah. Like, while <laughs> Percy's talking and yeah, explaining just, what I should be doing, I'm just yeah. going to punch him, right? So, <laughs> wait. There's a pig bleeding out right here, right? Yes, there is a pig yeah. bleeding out. I'm going to use shape water, because it's blood is mostly water, right? Waterboard. I would say yes. And I'm just going to fill Pollyanna's mouth and nose with pig blood while we talk. Uh, yeah, and as that happens, I'm just going to look at... Um, Matthew, I kind of like put my hands on Polly and his shoulders as Lark is starting to drown her with pig blood. And it's like, you all seem like a real 
hardy couple, but you are a couple. So I, I have to infer there is some real love between the two of you. And you might not be scared of hell, but I would wager you're scared of losing each other. So Matthew, uh, my friend Arthur here is going to poke around that little head of yours, and I would recommend you listen to him, or else Pollyanna here might not be breathing much besides pig blood for much longer. It's like a bubble of pig blood just over her whole head at this point. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. Mark can just waterbend. You are brutal. Can I make an intimidation check? Or yes, you can. <laughs> Ooh, Percy's getting spicy. Okay. He's doing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a, an 18. He kind of looks to you and then looks back at this just bubble. And he just looks at you, Arthur. And just glares at you. Stares? Okay. So I'm going to do my um, weird little psychic dagger thing and jam that in the back of his head. Yep. Um, And I guess, so now I can talk to him. So I'll just say, I don't know, something like, anything you'd care to share before your wife drowns to death? First of all, fuck you. Okay. But also, we're still doing this. If you're trying, if you're trying to get rid of the hell pig, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Would you care to tell me why? The hell pig is a spirit, it's a demon, it possesses mm-hmm. people. Go on. It'll always come back. It'll keep coming back. Until? Well, until our deal is over. Mm. Okay. And the terms of this particular arrangement would be... Pollyanna's running out of oxygen, so... Mammon gives us a potion to fatten the pigs... Uh-huh. And we give him a portion of our profit. Uh-huh. That's it. Yes. Yeah, and the potion involves grinding up human corpses, I presume? No. Those were just people that got too close. God damn, dude. That's fucked up. Um, okay, so how... I, I, I suppose then that killing you two would void the contract. That seems like the easiest way to get this situation handled. I don't know about you, but. Maybe, maybe it won't. Mm, And maybe your wife's gonna die in about 15 seconds. So if you wanna rethink that or, and let's roll intimidation just for shits and giggles. Sure. I like the rest of us are just watching Arthur stare into this guy's eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. And he's like, this is going well. <laughs> yeah, like, they're just in like an intense staring contest. And I, I'm going to uh, reshape the water bubble to look like a comical pig head around her head. That's a nice touch. Um, intimidation check is 16. Look, yeah, it'll void the contract, but that doesn't necessarily mean the hell pig will go away. I'm pretty sure what you just said was that once your contract was ended, the hell pig would go away. Is that not what you said? Did I mishear that? Doesn't mean Mammon won't send it back for whatever reason. Fair enough. Yeah, well, the whims of devils are not up for my interpretation. What I'm concerned with is getting rid of this thing now. So, um, okay, thanks for that. That's enough now. Um, so I'll just say to the group, all right, we can kill these fuckers. Yay. Oh, I'm already halfway there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can it's... see her body kind of like jerking as she's drowning in this ball of pig's blood around her head. Mm. 
All right, all right, Lark, let her breathe for a second before we murder her. What? Just for a moment, and we can kill her anyway. Why? Well, 101. Uh, I'm just gonna snap as parting the Red Sea as my pig blood bubble just parts in half around her head. And she just <laughs> projectile vomits blood. I, I, I won't even give her like a moment to like catch her breath before I say something to the tune of so what I gather from your husband is that the quickest way to end your contract with Mammon, which he says may get rid of the hell pig, at least it seems like our best bet, would just be to kill you two. Does that sound about right? And this is out loud, like verbally. I haven't telepathically anything. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, yes. Cool. So we have no reason to keep you alive then. Yeah. You can see the cogs turning in her head as she's like, how do I fix this? Uh Uh-huh. As she... As she, there, there is no response. She, her, the cogs are still turning in her head. Right. Okay. Yep. So, um, does anybody you else the do only the shot you guys or... have of not being dead right now is telling us how to end your hell pig arrangement? I mean, well, Percy. In all fairness, they did tell us how to end it. Like, if we just kill them, it'll be over. Well, I'm listening to any counter offers. And tick tock, tick tock, I've got other things to do. Does anybody else want to slit this bitch's throat or should I just do it myself? Yeah, I just mean, get over it. I was having fun over here. Well, by all means, you can have one. There's a whole other one. Well, she's staying with the lady. Anything? She's just kind of glaring. As you can see, she's glaring at you, but also she kind of looks down every once in a while and you can still see the cogs turning in her head. Like there's something, there's something, there's something, there's something, there's something, but she's not reaching any conclusion. Hmm. Well, have fun. And I'm just gonna <laughs> shape water the balloon the bubble back <laughs> over her head. You do see her at this point, just move trying to shake the water bubble off of her head. Oh, darling, it's magic. That's not going to work. She doesn't really so, hear you as she continues just rocking back and forth, trying to shake the blood bubble off of her head. So while she's doing that, um, can I uh, slit what's his name's throat just like the little piggy? Uh, I mean, yes. I don't know how you want to work that like in game, like as an attack or whatever, but. Yeah. Um... I would say since he's, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to think, because I think under certain circumstances, like somebody getting tied up, there's a status effect that they technically have that means that melee attacks are auto crits. And well, it's if an they're advantage. paralyzed, it would be. Oh, never mind. Yeah. He's not paralyzed. Right. He's just restrained. He's just restrained. Well, yep. you still get like your sneak attack and stuff, wouldn't you? Because True. Yeah. Yeah, I would. So I would say because he's tied up, you can take the moment to like grab his head and put him in a position where you would basically get a crit and then roll full sneak attack and just... It would okay. take a little extra time, but, you know, that, that, would, that would work. All right. Well, then that is a 27 to hit with the dagger. That hits. And... That is what a D four plus two D six. Wait, I don't have to roll them. Duh, four, six, six, twelve, sixteen, twenty. Well, you still do because that's you know the wait. Crit. What you, are we essentially, doing? You get a crit, so you deal full yeah. damage. Roll it again, and then add that to the total. Like oh, you do crits okay, normally. full, full, and then add. Okay, that's right. Yeah. So the okay, question is, so... can you do 76 points of damage with this crit? <laughs> well, Might take two or three little slashes. <laughs> that's 21 and neck. 19. <laughs> no, but I did do a total of 40. 
Okay. Yes, yeah, so you slash his throat. And he, <laughs> there's just blood running down. Blood is coming out of the corner of his mouth. You've clearly like he's clearly bleeding out at this point, but he is still alive. Did Are we doing sever- a lingering injuries thing or no? Not in this okay. campaign. Just we can discuss it for the I'd next campaign, there. but the, for this one, for now, no. Okay. Did you sever um, the connection? Did you sever the mental link with him? No, I have not yet. Great. But you felt all of that. <laughs> he kind of uh, looks at you and he just goes, the pig is already attacking. Ugh, lovely. Can I just like stab him again? Uh, yep. Once again, okay. auto crit. So full and right. roll again. So you dealt 40 points of damage. Can you deal 36? <laughs> oh, I definitely can. So the first one's 21. And then it's 21 plus 15. Oh my God. It's exactly 36. Okay. Yeah. So you just, <laughs> and he just, <laughs> yeah, he's dead now. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, that one's taken care of. How are you Do doing? Need to that? like roll Pollyanna the one that I'm still. drowning. Um. Well, let me check because it's drowning. Is you? You can hold your breath for a number of minutes equal to your Constitution modifier, and then you start suffocating, which means that you stay conscious for a number of rounds equal to your Constitution modifier before essentially falling unconscious. Um. So she has a con modifier of two. So two minutes before she falls unconscious, which presumably... Well, two minutes and 12 seconds. Two minutes of being Ah. able to hold her breath and then two minutes, then two rounds or 12 seconds of choking before lights go out. But that's just incapacitated. That's unconscious. That's not dead. Right. One casting of shape water, if you animate and move it, can last for an hour. And right. So yeah, you can just, after she lights out, you can just leave the bubble on her head and eventually she will just drown. Yeah. But I mean, it's going to take- Essentially, she will be making death saves. I think it's yeah. once you go on, I think, yeah, I think it is once you go unconscious. Yep. Unless you're pulled out of the water, you do death saves until you die. Correct. Yep. And it's not even like a three equals success and you stabilize. You have to keep making death saves until you fail three and die. Okay. Or well, you get air. Arthur, if that pig... Do you tell us that the pig's attacking? Let's say I did. Oh, I mean, this is going to take a while. <laughs> yeah, now we have to kill some sort of spirit thing. Do you just want to slit her throat, too? Yeah, fine. Same You've thing. done a lot more damage. Yep. Which I think if you if you deal 21 with your regular yeah. the max of everything, yeah, she has 19 hit points. She's just cool. Dies. Ah, oh, great. Now we have corpses to clean up. And the hell is my least favorite part. Um after I don't know, that, you, you wanna... do hear a slight tinkling noise as things hit the floor. You look at the staff, the rubies have all cracked and dulled and have fallen out of the staff. Hmm. It is now just a golden staff. Still gold though, right? Yes. Yoink? Question mark? Yeah, for sure. We should... He said that part of their contract was giving Mammon part of the cut, right? Yes, Why don't we just we gather all the gold in here and throw it in the portal for the devil? Wouldn't that keep the contract going? Or wouldn't it end the contract if we gave him all the gold they made? I don't know. Uh, what if I we don't got know no gold? Wouldn't that work. make the contract like they didn't keep up their end of the bargain or something? <laughs> well, they're dead, so isn't the contract voided? Anyway? I don't know. I don't know devil contracts. <laughs> well, let's well, go that's see. what I'm saying. If he was blowing smoke out of his ass or if the hell pig is attacking. Fair. So what, do we just leave these guys here? 
Yes. I mean, as <laughs> Let's go. So their bodies are just covered in blood, laying on the floor, tied up. Awesome. Do we still have the pigs at the back? Yeah, we're There's still good pigs. people, right? <laughs> yeah, we're releasing the pigs and then we're burning the damn building. <sighs> Always fire so with you, but. So we're what is, the pigs. We're what is it with you mortals and this obsession with good and evil, right and wrong? They were um, threats, and we dealt with them. And rude ones at that. <laughs> now, now, that is fair. They were quite rude. Besides, I'm and sure plus they, they murdered killed. all those people, so. Yeah. Eh, I mean, you've yeah. killed more people than they have, probably. Well, they all deserved it. Queens, no, I've killed more people than these two probably have. Yeah, fair. All right, so who are we I'm to judge? Anyway, I, yes, we know. <laughs> uh, I, I guess let's see if we can find this pig thing, kill that, and then I need to go to bed. <laughs> I'm surprised yeah, uh, let's go find this pig. Beer or something. As you yeah, step outside of the stuck pig butchery, the skyline, it is clearly nighttime, but the skyline glows with fire. And at this point, you begin to hear the yells and screams of people running around. And you hear the squeal of a boar before what sounds like another gout of flames erupting from something. And the light grows a little bit. And you can mm. also smell the smoke beginning to waft over. So oh, no. my guess is going to be that away. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. Go. yeah, I think so. Mark's going to fly above everybody. He's getting f- far above the bat, like the ground level, like at least 30 feet up. I'm going to um, lit this building on fire as we all walk away from it. <laughs> yep. Of course. Do your thing. <laughs> yeah, the building begins. How are you doing it? I'm gonna spit fire on it. Uh, with your breath weapon. Yeah. Yeah, you catch the door frame on fire and part of the wall and the flames begin to go up the building. It doesn't catch as quickly as you expect it would, but it is catching. It will eventually burn down. And then I just look at it like this. <laughs> <sighs> Never met somebody who was so proud of arson. All of those pigs are gonna burn to death. Do you, <laughs> yes, I they care. are. I thought I told you guys to open the fence. Well, oh, that was above game. That was not. Lark is just. They're fucking. They're animals. They're mm-hmm. livestock. He doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Oh, they're yeah. just pigs. So toward the flames mm-hmm. the other flames on the other side yeah the, the, yeah, the other yeah, yes. yeah. The Lark is just calling down you're falling behind okay you Lark watch as this boar it is a giant boar its back is covered in flames the sort of mohawk that boars kind of have along their back is just made of fire. It also, as it runs, breathes out a cone of fire that catches the field as people run towards it and then back up with pitchforks as it continues to squeal and run around, occasionally just breathing gouts of flames, squealing horrifically. (laughs) You do see the, you do actually see one person who kind of holds out the pitchfork it charges this person charges towards the pig but the pig just unleashes a gout of flames onto it and he ah, runs across the field burning before collapsing into the ground the flames spreading off of his body to other parts of the field as this field continues to burn how far away is the rest of the party are you guys running after me i'm flying yeah yeah Yeah, totally Yep, definitely. I just yeah. might They're not have to go around about buildings. Like, at this point, possibly 20 feet behind you as you're kind of flying. You got a bit of a head start and they're dashing after you. 
Um, is there anything I want to do when I see this boar? Make more bacon. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, I mean, mm, I guess I'll call back and be like, are we just attacking it or what? I don't think it can be reasonable. Yeah, yeah. shoot it. It's like a de- it's a devil boar. <laughs> uh, I don't think a lot of fire element stuff would do much. Probably not. No Thank initiative. You. We're just gonna. I'm gonna have. Uh, sorry, let me just look this up. I'm gonna summon my hound of ill omen with three sorcery Ooh. points. God damn it. Um. So if it's within 120 feet of me, and yeah. I would say you could get close enough before dropping that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna drop Fifi right on top of, or right right next, right next, and it is, oh yeah, it's just gonna share its initiative with me, um, because that's what we ruled that gonna do. And I think I'll also just cast Mind Whip on it. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Hound of El Omen's a bonus action. Mind Whip is a regular action. So I will Mind Whip this thing. All right. Uh, and it's an intelligence check? It's an intelligence saving throw. Which is, <laughs> it has a minus four. It's going to do it with disadvantage uh, because my Hound is right next to it. Um... Well, it rolled a natural 20 for one, but it rolled an eight for the other, which means it rolled a four. Oof. Well, I mean, good thing I gave it disadvantage because of that. Uh, so it's going to take 3d6 psychic damage. So it's going to take 13 psychic damage. And on its next turn, it chooses whether it's going to move, take an action, or a bonus action. It only gets to do one of the three. So it can't move and attack. It can't attack. Yeah, it only gets either an action, a move, or a bonus action on its turn. All right. And you said it was 13? 13 psychic damage, and then Fifi's gonna Fifi's gonna do Fifi. All right. Uh, which means I have to look up a dire wolf statistic. Would it matter? So it's supposed to use, let me read what it says. Uh So since it uses the direwolf stat block, does that mean its attacks aren't magical? But it's the hound made of um, shadows. Right. Does it not say that the attacks are magical in the little blurb? Uh, because it has a bunch of changes, like it's medium instead of large. It has this many hit points. No, it, it doesn't say its attack attacks bonus. are magical, but it can move through other creatures and objects. One yeah, then is... its attacks aren't magical. Yeah, that's dumb. I know, but... It's kind of dumb. Ah, well. Okay, thieves. AKA my giant shadow fox. It also, it gets mm-hmm. extra hit points. Um, bite. As a 16. That just hits. Ooh. Uh, it's gonna take... 10 piercing damage. Uh huh. And it needs to make a strength saving throw. Twenty-two. Oh, it's not prone. Fifi's just biting it. It's fine. I mean, it is huge. Oh yeah. She's large, thank you. Oh. She's yeah, no, no. Uh, she's a dire wolf-sized fox made of howling shadows. But this Great. thing is a huge creature, so she probably looks small. Yeah, she looks very small. This thing is huge. Like, two people can... S- one person can sit on another person's shoulders and still be barely able to reach the top of the sort of hump on its back. It is huge. Uh, but yeah, that's it for me. I'm just going to brain right. blast This is going to and- be more of a free-form combat where everybody is going to get an action, bonus action and a movement speed. 
you're all going to take it one at a time and you don't get to do anything else until everybody has gone. I'm not going to make you roll initiative for this because you're kind of joining a combat encounter and it's and we... a big, vast one. Um, so whoever wants to go first, as you all run up, you can. I will say at this point, you guys are around 120 feet away from this thing. Yes. Can we stop there? No one get close to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Oh, are you going to try to fireball are you it? Fireball it? Why would you fireball a fire pit? <laughs> it's made of fire. Right. I just want to see more fire. <laughs> okay, I really feel like we need to talk about how comfortable you are with setting things on fire. <laughs> I love that. I know Jesus. it's made of fire and probably immune to fire. I just want to do fire. <laughs> You're a very oh God. violent divination wizard. <laughs> Uh, I'm yeah. still a wizard. Can I hunter's mark that? Yes. Uh, so that means you're going to take your turn now. Yeah. Um, awesome. Let's do that. Uh huh. And then we will. Oh wait. I mean. Yeah, I'll just fire my. My. Um, so obviously longbow. you're not going to be getting fire damage off of it. Right. Oh. I'm just going to use my longbow. Okay. You're just regular longbow? Yep. All right. Why not? That so, is a 23. Yep, that hits. Uh, your regular longbow isn't magical, is it? C- correct. It is not magical. All right. So roll your damage and then okay. have it because obviously. Oh, what? Balls? It it's ha- not oh, a magical a weapon. God damn it, I forgot. All <laughs> right, well, obviously use the wrong bow then. Um, eight, those, that one, the other thing. Wait. Yes. Nope. Hang on. <laughs> Need one more. Okay, 33 and a half would be what, 17 or 16? You always round down down when dividing, so it would be 16. 16, okay. All right. Yeah, you unleash this arrow that streaks across the battlefield, and it sinks into the pig, but the pig doesn't seem to notice as it continues squealing and stomping on the ground. Um, All right, so unless you're going to move, someone else take their action. Lark and Arthur have already acted. We still have Alex, Rarick, and Percy. I'll just Ooh. use my frostbite then. Y'all are such pussies. Fire. I'm so using my frostbite. Can I just have Jasmine run up closer? Like she's got 50 feet, so I guess 70 feet away now then. Okay. Yeah. Jasmine <laughs> runs into the field. This part of the field is not on fire yet. So. Yeah. Frostbite. Actually, right. you know what? Can we can we call that a dash and have her move 100 feet? Uh, sure. So she'll be 20 feet away. Yep. Yep. Did you say we're still 120 feet away from this thing? Yes. Okay, yes. I'm going to have to like run there then. Like about six You do feet. have a movement so you can get 90 what, feet away. 30? Yeah. This 120 minus far. 30 would be 90. So you can get 90 feet away from this thing and still have an action to cast a spell. Well, frostbite yeah. is 60 feet. Then you can't cast frostbite. <laughs> you know what? Yes, I do. I met him last week, and he's a great guy. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. It was a dad joke. It's fine. All right. Never mind. So I'll what just, you doing? Um, I'll just do my magic missile. The seven. Good old staple. Fifth, fifth one. Yep. Do you have a fifth level spell slot? I guess yeah, you I would. had two. Okay. All right. Yeah. One so, them, so I yep. have one more. Let's yep. So that's 74 plus seven. Three. I'm going to write that shit down just because oh, none of this is are working. Yeah. Hello? And just give me the total. Huh? Sorry. Yeah. Just give me the total once you've, yeah. Hmm. 
two, two. Oh my god, they're all twos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twenty-eight. That's the with a plus seven. Twenty-eight. All right. Yeah, you unleash this barrage of arcane bolts that slam into the pig. It squeals, shaking its head. Is there anyone else who would like to act? I think we still have Alex and Percy yeah. left. Percy is going to summon a spiritual weapon using a level four spell slot um, and use that to make an attack. Uh, you are 120 feet away. Lamau, I'm just gonna dash then, I guess. Say <laughs> Lamau. Yeah. So you have so you're sixty feet away from this pig with your cool. dash. Then I will use my my my, my spiritual weapon. <laughs> right, because that spells foot a bonus range. action, and it's a bonus action to cast, which means you can use your action to dash. Yep. So now I'll make an attack. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and that's going to be, what is my modifier? A 17 to hit. Uh, yep, that hits. Sweet. Um, so that is 2d8 plus my spell casting modifier. Uh-huh. Or 3 plus, I think of a plus 4. Yes. So eight plus is 11 damage, 11 force damage. All right. Yeah, this thing uh, isn't looking too good as it reels screaming and screeching. It flames still coming out of its mouth, but it is still standing. So last but cool. not least, we have Alex. I think Alex is just going to dash. <laughs> I think that all might right. be all so he get can really do. 60 feet. <laughs> yeah. He can do, um, what's What's the magic? What's the range for magic missile? Oh, he. But that's his action. He can't. He can't cast magic missile. He's already used his action. Um, uh, yeah, fair. Yeah. All right. So this time, it is the pig, and it runs sixty feet away. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um. I'm trying to think. It wasn't entangled, was it? No, it was not entangled. So I, but I it mind, can only choose between yeah, moving with it. or attacking. It can either move or attack. And it, it doesn't get a reaction, right? Does not get an action. If it picks action, it doesn't get a bonus action. If it picks move, it doesn't get either. All right. Um, well, it's actually going to turn, and you all are 60 feet away, but it doesn't care. It's just trying to cause damage. So it unleashes, it squeals and unleashes this huge 30 foot cone of flames. Two farmers get caught in it and burn to death. Um, uh, okay. And oh, no. oh, go what? inside. <laughs> <laughs> you see a bunch of other people with pitchforks going, we can get it. And then like two of them just burn yeah. to death. Um, but it squeals not and kind of stamps on the ground, not really being able to move, kind of disoriented and dizzy. So we'll go back up to whoever wants to go next. Hang now on. everybody has their actions, has everything back. Um, not that I'm super thrilled about it, but Jasmine would have been caught in that. Oh. Oh, would Fifi have been caught in it too? No, she would not. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, Jasmine would have been caught in it. So um, make a dexterity saving throw for Jasmine. Okay. Um, and what is her shit? There she is. Okay, Dex is plus two with advantage because she can see me. Wow. Super. Four. 12 points of fire damage as the flames ripple across the field um, and parts of the field start burning. So who is it that is choosing to go now? I think I would go. I would want to go because we're 60 feet by now, right? 
Yes. I'll use Frostbite this time. All right. Uh, is that an attack roll or do I have to save? Constitution save. All right. 15 to save. She rolled a seven. Uh, the pig. And 2d6. Half because she's resistant to cold damage. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> she's on fire. Of course she's resistant to cold damage. Nope. Okay, let me do that again. I'm sorry. Five. Six. 5.5? <laughs> so it would be five points of damage. Okay. Oh, rounded down. Damn it. As you blast her with this pig with the cold energy, it washes over, but the pig shrieks and shakes. It is still alive, but it looks like it is barely hanging on to life. Can I? Can I go? Yes. Because I? I flew to the scene. I'm going to cast Blight on this piggy. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. So I need a constitution saving throw with disadvantage because Fifi's still right next to it. Right. Um, yep, that's a four plus the con makes it a seven. Okay, it's going to take wow. 8v8 necrotic damage. Ooh, god damn. Blight is a horrific spell. 18. Yeah. 20. Wow. 30. <laughs> 37. 41 necrotic damage. Ooh. Just yeah. a bucket it, right up. As right. you unleash this virulent energy upon it, it had one hit point. This ah. thing just erupts into flames as you see this rot form over it. And as it crumbles away, swirling, the flames spiraling, you see this the ash lift into the air and you watch as replacing this pig is a girl in a nightgown and you watch as the blight takes over her as well as you completely blight her and she falls to the ground holy crap leaving oh yeah just the a Barton corpse. did say something about it being a spirit that possesses people. I feel like I forgot to mention that. Whoops. Mm -hmm. Let's pretend oh we God. didn't know that. This whole time, <laughs> could we have just like sent it back to its home plane like Percy did with the Dulahan? <laughs> you don't know. And it's too late now. I feel like we shouldn't tell anybody about what happened here. There is still the corpse of what appears to be maybe someone between the age of 18 and 24 just laying on the ground let's where the pig not, was. Let's just not well, tell anybody that we talked to those two people over there at the burning butchery. What are you talking about? I have no idea. You do see a column of smoke rising into the air behind you. Well, I mean, and there's plenty of other corpses around. I don't think anybody's going to figure it out. So, do we collect the reward? <laughs> <laughs> really? The cleric doesn't you? want to say any words over the girl I'm, we just I already did it. Murdered. You didn't even see I did it so fast. It was, I already went over there. <laughs> yeah, you walk over. You roll oh my her God. over. Uh, give me just a straight intelligence check as you roll her sure. over. Um, that's going to be a 16. She looks remarkably like Pollyanna. Like, oh. looks like her kid. <laughs> I mean, at least we killed the whole family. Again. Another wow, so they really family. just like, sacrificed their child to this. <laughs> this how, is, many, how many entire fun. family have we, like, destroyed? <laughs> we, we really just eliminated a whole bloodline, didn't we? <laughs> I'd really yep. rather not talk about it. We left one of them alive back in Darkmoor. Mm. Oh, Brennan. Poor yeah. kid. Why is he a yeah. poor kid? He's Fey now. It's better. Oh. So you keep saying. No, it's not better. 
Yeah, also the field is still on fire and the fire is continually spreading. Uh, do we have a way to stop that? <laughs> yeah, I feel like somebody should do something about that. I don't have enough water nearby. Uh, I can't, I'm not, a, I'm not a fire hose. I don't think I have any magic that would help this. Uh, I guess we just get some buckets. <laughs> can I ice it? Can I? Oh wait, can I mold it? <laughs> is the earth loose enough because it's a field? Yeah, you can. And I'm just going to start earth bending fire. now. Yeah, just waves of earth just folding over themselves, slamming on top of the fire. It does put it out. So, yeah, it probably takes about maybe like 30 minutes of continually chasing everything and casting earth bend to like just slam the fire until finally the fire kind of dies because it runs out of fuel and you keep slapping the edge of it with... um mold earth and the villagers do come with buckets and start tossing them over um wait the mark just fire. at the very tail end of it he's just like he kind of just flies back to the group and he's like wait why did i even bother doing that what do i was I gonna <laughs> i was gonna ask like you usually don't care <laughs> maybe we're rubbing up on you up up on you and are you rubbing off on me, or am I rubbing off on you? Is the question. Okay. Um, Percy did nobody's advocate rubbing for murdering an entire family today. Okay, nobody well, gets to rub anything off. They were bad people that did a lot of bad things. Um, and when Arthur yeah, said nobody gets to rub anything you, that off, didn't like, matter. I saw the way you were looking at Percy when he went dark mode. We both know you want to rub something <laughs> off later. Wow. <laughs> uh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, after maybe an hour of work, the fire does get put out. The field is just smoldering. There is still um, smoke rolling off of this field, but the fires are extinguished. Sweet. Should we go back to Mammon's shrine? Yeah, should we see uh, if that's all taken care of? I'm so tired. Fine. God. What time is it? Is it isn't it relatively late? Yeah, it's nighttime. Yeah, I would I would say it's probably maybe at this point eleven o'clock at night. Yeah, and we've been traveling since early morning. So okay. let's wrap this shit up. If, All right, okay. so where are you heading? Back to the windmill. Yep, you head up to the windmill to find the door is hanging ever so slightly open. As you walk inside, the torches do not light themselves. Additionally, the hole in the ground is literally just a five-foot hole in the ground with dirt walls and a dirt floor. Oh. Well, that worked that out, That looks then. ended to me. Yep, <laughs> I, no need to... So no need Rurik, to read into that. Rurik yawns really hard and he's like, okay, should I burn this place too? No, my no. god. Okay, no. fine. Let's go home. Or You didn't need to burn to the first place either, but here we are. <laughs> Let's just go back to the That was covering evidence. Thing. Yeah, also, as you head it back. felt like if they if the house was burning and then there was the boar there, I feel like it made sense. People would just think that the boar was in that place. Yeah, sure. We'll let's just, let's just go to bed. As you head back into the village, you see there are people trying to put out the stuck pig butchery. They have let the pigs out. The pigs, however, they are not running very fast. No. They are so fat, they're dragging all of their weight along the floor. <laughs> they cannot move very fast. But they yeah, are making an attempt to escape. And people are attempting to put the building out. But at this point, the second floor has entirely burned. And it's now moving down to the first floor. You even see at one point, as you turn to enter um, into the severed heart string, you do hear the whole building just collapse. Well, that solves that then. I did that. <laughs> yeah, we were there. You walk in to see Tiffany and several other people standing by the window, kind of just staring. 
Oh, Tiffany. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, eventful evening, I guess. Um, we what, what can I do for you? <laughs> oh, um, well, that's good. Do you, do you have any evidence of that? Um, All of the villagers that watched us do it out in the fields. Oh, all right. Well, give me just a second. And she walks back into the kitchen and she comes back with, um, she comes back and she opens a drawstring bag and she pulls out a single uh, platinum coin and hands it over. Oh my. There, that's, um, that's, that's the reward. Um, are, are you um, planning on staying? We have some rooms available. They're almost always vacant. We have like four of them. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I assume they're comp, right? <laughs> At this point, yes. I mean, we did just say uh, Which yeah. calls for a round of ale. No, just me. <laughs> all right. Yeah. You all get one on the house, I guess. And she goes back and she pours each of you Sweet. a stein of ale. And, and gives it to I you. am holding my cup and just staring at it. Oh, uh, right. And she just gently takes it from you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just not thinking straight tonight. It's all right. Um, um, I, I guess if you're okay with some milk, it's all, it's all we got, really. That's fine. Okay. Really? We don't have a lot that's, not al- that's non-alcoholic. Oh, not you. I meant him. Oh, okay. <laughs> she comes back with a glass of milk and just gives you a glass of milk. Oh, oh almond milk. Shamefully. Okay. Oh, we milk? don't have that. that hasn't I'm sorry. been invented. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're fine. Thank you. Uh, I'm just gonna sleep. And she is just like, I'm. I'm going to go to bed. Your here are the keys to your rooms, and she Thank gives you. you all four keys. Just don't trash the place, and well, thank no you for everything about that you've one. done. Uh, yep. I'm going to bed, and yeah. she starts pulling off her apron. There's still some patrons that are just staring out the window at the still smoldering stuck pig. Um, eh, old news. I'll be right back. Yeah. But yeah, so you all. Um, head upstairs to your rooms. Is there anything that you would like to do before having your long rest? Bedtime. We each get a room. Well, somebody has to share with Alex. I'm not sharing with Alex. (laughs) Yeah, I'm certainly not. I got a whole cat. I'll share with Alex. You can stay with Percy. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, that means Lark gets his own room. (laughs) Not that for he once. takes that much space. No. But... True, but for once he gets his own room. Unless you want Alex to have his own room and Percy can share with Lark. No, I'll sleep with Alex. I'm sure Lark Percy will love that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you all settle in for a long sleep and yeah, you yeah. have an un... you, you have an yep. uninterrupted long rest and we are going to end the episode there with the mystery of the hell pig solved see you guys next week when they finally go into the city of mourning after many many long sessions to find out what is going on arn what is going on balthazar's place of residence and where exactly it is. So I will see you all next week.